Hey what's up guys, Omegonix here and welcome back to a brand new Godot 4 tutorial here on the channel. So I've shown you guys how to make a first person controller script in Godot before, however I've never actually made a standalone tutorial on how to do it, because the only times I've ever shown how to make a first person controller script have been in my horror game tutorial series videos. So if you're someone who's not interested in watching those videos, you've most likely never seen that I've shown you guys how to make a first person controller script before, which is why I've decided to make this tutorial today. So in this video, today I'm going to be simply teaching you guys how to make a basic first person controller script in Godot. So as you can see here I have this basic scene with a floor setup which we're going to be using for our player to walk around on. So to begin I'm going to create a new scene, a 3D scene, and I'm going to change the type of our scene here to a character body 3D since that's what our player is going to be. And then I'm going to rename the node 3D to player and then I'm going to go add child node, collision shape 3D, and then we're going to add a cylinder shape, I mean not a cylinder shape, sorry, a capsule shape, so now we have a capsule shape. Then what we're going to do is selecting your parent node here, you then want to go add child node, node 3D. So now you want to move this node 3D up towards your player's head, so we just move it up just like that. And you want to rename this node 3D to head, because this is going to be our player's head which is going to contain the player camera. So selecting your head node, you then want to go add child node, camera 3D, and then this will be the player's camera, so this is how our player is going to see. So that there is the basic node structure for our player, so what we're going to do now is by selecting your player node here, so your parent node, uh, you then want to go to inspect the menu to the right, then where it says script empty, just click here, then go new script, and now with the template, what you want to do is you want to select on to where it says no default and then you want to select character body 3D and basically what this will do here is this will set the template for our player script basically so the cool thing about Godot is it does provide us with a basic script which can be used for player movement whether it be FPS games, third person games as it mentions here so now once you've got your script ready to go, oh and by the way you might want to save it into your scripts folder as well, so if you want to change your file path you can click on the folder here, then we just create a new folder called scripts, then save our player script into there, and there we go. So now uh, when you're all ready, you can now cl select create in order to create the new script. So before we do make any edits to this player script, I do want to simply explain to you guys how it does work. So first up here we have our two variables, well they're called const as you can see. So what const is short for is constant, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure const is short for constant. And so basically what this is, right, is a const variable cannot be changed during runtime. So let's say for example you wanted to add a sprint function to your game and you wanted to make it so then your player speeds up whenever you try to sprint. Now with a const variable you won't actually be able to change your speed at all, it's just going to stay at whatever you have it set to here. So if I have my speed set to 5, it will stay at 5 the whole time even if I try to change it. So yeah, const variables can't be changed. However, if you do want to change your speed at any point during your game's runtime, you can just simply change this const to a var, and it's as simple as that. And the same thing with your jump velocity as well. As long as you set it to a var instead of a const, then it will all work out. Oh, and by the way, um, make sure that you do save your scenes as you do work on them. So you can just press Control s and then we can go save to save our player scene, just like that. So then if your PC crashes or your project crashes, then at least you keep your progress. Alright, so that there is our speed and jump velocity variable. So the speed determines the speed of our character, the jump velocity determines how high our player can jump. And again, these are set to consts by default, but if you want to change these at any point during runtime, then you can just have them set to var. So then we have our physics process function. So physics process functions are how physics are handled in Godot. So basically stuff is just updated every physics frame here. So anything with a hashtag out the front of it is a comment. So if I wanted to add on to this and just say, you know, skibbity toilet for example, that's not going to affect the code at all, since comments aren't part of the code, they're just comments, they basically just help you explain uh, what's going on in the code if you ever need to remind yourself of anything. So as you can see here, this comment says add the gravity. So what this bit of code does here is it adds the gravity to our player. So if our player is not on the floor, then what will happen is our player will then have gravity added to it so then it falls towards the ground. 
and then times delta helps keep the speed of which the player falls tied to the frame rate. I mean, not tied to the frame rate, it's then independent of the frame rate, I mean. So then we have handle jump, so as it explains here, these two lines of code handle the jump. So whenever we press the UI accept button, which I'm pretty sure is the space bar, and our player is on the floor, what will then happen is our player's Y velocity will then have the jump velocity added to it, and the Y velocity means up. So by adding the jump velocity onto the Y velocity, we're making the player go up. So then we have these two comments here which say, get the input direction and handle the movement, the deceleration. As good practice, you should replace UI actions with custom gameplay actions. So what that's talking about here is these UI actions here, like UI accept, UI left, UI right, UI up, UI down. So what we're actually going to do, uh, before I do continue on explaining what the script does, is we are actually going to be replacing these uh, input UI thingies with our own inputs. So if we actually go project and project settings, and then we go to the input map section, here is where we can actually add in our inputs. So I'm just going to remove all these basic inputs I have for now, so we just start off fresh. So if we go to where it says add new action, and then you were to type in up, for example, that now adds the up action. So then we can go add down, left, and right, and then we can also add a jump action too. And so in order to add keys to these actions, what you do is you click onto the plus next to an action. So I'm going to cl click the, on the plus next to my up action, and we're going to go enter W. So when you press a key, it will detect the key, and then you can go OK. And now the W key is tied to the up action. Then with the down, I'm then going to tie the S key. Then with left is going to be the A key. Then with right is going to be the D key. And then last but not least with jump is going to be the space key and then boom as you can now see we now have all these actions set up so if we go back into our player script and we were to replace ui accept with jump that will now tie our jump action to the jump action that we just made so then with our uh, our ui left right up and down we can just remove the ui from out the front of left right up and down and now these will be set to our own custom input actions, just like with the jump one. Alright, so now let me explain what the rest of this script does. So var input direction, so this variable basically determines uh, the direction of which our player will be moving. So whether we're pressing the left key, the right key, the up key, or the down key will determine our player's direction. So then we actually have a variable for the direction itself. So basically what this does is it grabs our player's transform.basis, then it times it by this vector free here, which includes our input direction.x and our input direction.y, and then that is applied to then make our player's direction. So basically our input direction.x, that's referring to this variable here, and then input direction.y, again that's this variable here, just the y direction of that. So then if direction, so what if direction means is this means if our player is moving, then what will happen is our velocity x and z values will be added onto it. So our velocity x and z values basically mean our forwards, backwards, left and right movement. So basically, yeah, whenever our player is moving, our velocity x and z will then have the direction x and z applied to it, and then it will be multiplied by the speed, so then our player is moving either left, right, forwards or backwards at the speed that we want it to. So what else means is this basically means if our player is no longer moving, then our player will stop. So basically these move toward functions here, where we have velocity x and z equals to move toward, basically this just stops the player in its place, makes the player completely stop. So it just moves the player towards its final destination, which is pretty much in the player's position in which it already stopped moving at, and yeah. And then last but not least, we have move and slide. And move and slide is the function of a character body 3D, which actually makes the player move and slide. Alrighty, so now that I've fully explained that and we've got our input stuff all set up here, now let's actually get to doing the script for our player camera. Because one thing which you've probably noticed with this script here is that there is no actual function for the player camera. So here's what we're going to do about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our head node here, and then we're going to create a new script for it. So go new script. And I'm going to save this into my scripts folder. I'm just going to call it head.gd and then we'll go create just like that. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is create a variable called sensitivity. So I'm just going to go down a line here, go var, and then we can call this sensitivity. And I'm going to set this to 0.2 by default. And then in our ready function here, I'm then going to add input.setMouseMode. 
and then we're going to set the mouse mode kit to captured and basically what this does is this ensures that our mouse is not visible on the screen as we're looking around and it also makes sure that our mouse is kept to the center of the screen so it is captured and locked at the center of the screen so then we don't have any issues when it comes to rota rotating the player camera all the way around and then with the process function here we don't need this so we can get rid of it we will however need to create a new function called func underscore input and then event input event just like that and then we do if event is input mouse motion so basically what we're checking here is we are checking if our mouse is moving so as you can see here with how i'm moving my mouse on the screen right this is mouse motion right so if event is mouse motion then we do the two dots and then indent we do get underscore parent dot rotate underscore y so basically we're going to be rotating our player on its y axis which means either left or right and then we do deg to rad so what we're doing is we're converting from rotation degrees to radians because you know that's how the rotate y works we need it to be in radians and what we're going to be doing here is event oops event dot relative dot x and also we need to put a minus symbol out the front of that too so we need to do negative event dot relative dot x and then we do a symbol just like that because now we're going to be multiplying it so you just want to do that star symbol there and then we type in sensitivity so basically what this line of code here is doing is it is basically rotating our player on the y axis so that means either left or right and it will be according to the event relative dot x and we'll be timesing that by our sensitivity so then our player is rotating left or right based on our sensitivity variable so now we go down the line so then we do rotate underscore x so the reason as to why we do rotate x now is because this is going to be for rotating our player's camera up and down so the reason as to why we do get parent dot rotate y here is because we are grabbing the player itself because the player is the parent node so we're grabbing the player itself and then we're ro rotating that on the y axis and then when we're looking up and down instead of rotating the player up and down because that would cause issues instead what we do is we rotate the head itself up and down on the x-axis so here we do deg to rad once again since we need to convert from degrees to radians and then here will be negative event dot relative dot y so here when we're rotating the player left and right we use our event relative dot x but here when we're rotating the camera up and down we do event relative dot y so basically what event is is this is going to be our mouse motion as i mentioned before so if event is input event mouse motion so the y and x values determine if we're moving our mouse up or down you know it basically just grabs those values and then afterwards we do the same thing again where we go multiplied by sensitivity so then our player head rotates up and down based on our sensitivity then we go down another line and then now what we need to do is we now need to clamp our player's head rotation so now we go rotation dot x equals clamp f and then we enter in rotation dot x since rotation dot x is what we want to clamp and then with our min and max values this will be the minimum and maximum values of which our player will be able to rotate its head up and down so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to do negative 90 for the min value and then 90 for the max value so then our player can look all the way down and all the way up because otherwise if you don't clamp your player's head then they're going to be able to look 360 all the way around you're going to be you know going upside down and stuff like that so yeah and then that pretty much is it for our player's head and that's it for our player in general so yeah guys that is our player done so now if we go into our script here i mean into our basic scene here that i have set up where we can test out the player um, i'm now going to go instantiate child scene then we go add the player into our scene here then we're just going to move it up right so there is now our player so before i do test out the player i'm just going to quickly add in the environment and sun just so that it isn't dark in the scene also something else which I forgot to mention as well is that you should actually do deg to rad on the uh, on the clamp function here. I forgot to actually mention that because otherwise you will have issues if you don't do deg to rad since this uses radians instead of degrees. I just remembered that. And there we go. Boom, now this should all work correctly. So now once you've got your player added into your scene and you're all ready to go, 
Now all you need to do is you just need to make sure you're in your scene, click on the clipboard up here in order to test it out, and boom! Now here we are playing. So as you can see, I am now moving around, I can look around, I can look down, and when I try to look it down even further I can't because the value is clamped to negative 90, and then when I look up it's clamped to 90 so I can just look straight up like that and can't look up any further. And I can also jump, I can move, and wherever I rotate, my player will move, thanks to the uh, head script that we made. So anyways guys, that's going to be the end of this tutorial, and that there is how you make a basic first person controller script in Godot. So if you did enjoy this tutorial, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. I've never actually made a standalone tutorial on how to do this, I've only ever shown how to do this in my horror game tutorial series videos, so I thought it'd be interesting to make a standalone video on how to make a first person controller script in Godot, in case you're someone who's missed out on my horror game tutorial series videos. But yeah, so anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.